Hello, welcome to this video on preprint review. We're going to be talking to you about what preprint review is, why it matters to you and your research community, the different types of preprint review and how you can participate in preprint review. And we'll be running through some basics in terms of what constitutes good practice in preprint review. And throughout our slides and in summary form at the end of our slides, we'll be pointing you as to where to go for more information. But first, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Jane Alfred, I'm the Director of Catalyst Editorial, and I'm a professional editor and trainer, and I provide training in peer review, research integrity, and good research practice, good authorship practice, and publication ethics. That's both to the academic research community and to scholarly publishers as well. I'm a member of two editorial organizations called COPE and EASE, and I'm also an advisory council member for the UK Research Integrity Office. I am Irache Puebla. I'm director of strategic initiatives and community at ASA Bio. And in this role, I work to promote the productive use of preprints in the life sciences. Before this role, I worked in publishing for a number of years. And while I moved from that capacity, I have remained involved with editorial activities, both through COPE and EASE. I'm facilitation and integrity officer for COPE and a member of the peer review committee at EASE. So who is this video for? Well, if you're an early career researcher, for example, who wants to develop their peer review skills, their academic profile, and to improve their research reporting skills by participating in preprint review, well, this video is for you. Alternatively, you might be a researcher who's interested in open science and in seeking resources to engage collaborators or trainees or, or others to engage with pub public commentary on preprints. You might be a researcher, a funder or a scholarly publisher who's interested in innovations in peer review and who wants to better understand existing preprint review initiatives. Or you might be like me, a trainer who's looking to update their information and training resources on preprint review. In fact, this video is pretty much for anyone who wants to encourage the uptake of preprint review. Please watch this video and link to it from your organization's website and or from information that you share about preprint review. So what are preprints? Well, preprints are a full report of scholarly work that's posted freely on a preprint server or repository. They're often copies of manuscripts that are submitted subsequently. Sorry, they're often copies of manuscripts that are subsequently submitted for publication at a journal, and they're given a persistent identifier when they're posted. This is often a DOI, a digital object identifier that makes a preprint discoverable. They're not peer reviewed by a preprint server before being posted online, but some preprint servers do run um, preprints through some basic checks, for example, to check for plagiarism and or to check for offensive and or dangerous content. It might surprise you to know that there are currently over 50 preprint servers that are available and they vary according to the academic discipline, region and languages they cover. They vary according to their screening processes as well and whether they're included in indexing services. They're operated by a range of organizations as well, from academic institutes to communities and societies, and they're operated by some publishers as well. Where can you find preprint servers in your field? We recommend going to the ASAP Bio preprint server. This is a directory that provides a list of preprint servers and also information on their policies and practices. So go to ASAP Bio's preprint server directory and find preprints that are publishing papers relevant to your field. You can also go to the directory of open access preprint repositories. This covers preprints across the STEM and arts, humanities and social sciences disciplines and allows you to search for preprints by their function. So what do we mean by preprint review? By virtue of their public availability, Preprints offer opportunities by which many re readers can interact with them uh, and respond to their latest papers or even review preprints, all of this in a number of ways. These public interactions with preprints can take a number of forms, 
from unstructured brief comments, for example, through social media platforms, all the way to formal peer review, in a way very similar to the review reports that we are familiar with developed from academic journals. In terms of reflecting on the goals of preprint review, something to bear in mind is that this type of feedback and reviews provide an evaluation of the research based on the merits of the research itself. The, one of the goals of preprint review is to help authors to improve the rigor, quality, or the presentation of that work that they have deposited at the preprint server. And in addition, the preprint review provides broader context for that piece of research for any interested readers. But when we compare preprint review to journal review, it is important to remember that preprint review will not provide the recommendation of whether that piece of research should be accepted, revised, or rejected by a specific journal. We also wanted to highlight some of the benefits of preprint review. Firstly, Public preprint reviews allow those reports to be re reused, and this can reduce the review cycles for that manuscript when it is submitted to the journal. This means potentially a more streamlined path to publication for the authors, but also reduce burden on the reviewers who evaluate the manuscripts. Secondly, public reviews provide readers with important context on that preprint. This can be relevant context for specialized audiences, such as other experts working in the same field, or non-specialized audiences, such as uh, any reader, patients, or even journalists. The public review may highlight the preprint's strengths, but also the limitations of that piece of research and any open questions that may remain about that line of research. Thirdly, preprint review allows more researchers to participate in peer review activities compared to journal review. The fact that any researcher can contribute preprint reviews without an invitation by the journal means that we have a potential more diverse and larger pool of reviewers, including groups that are often underrepresented in journal peer review, such as researchers from certain geographical areas and career stages. And fourthly, preprint reviews are an opportunity to surface the important work of reviewers to a broader audience. We know that peer review often goes un unrecognized. So we hope that by surfacing these comments and evaluations, we can promote greater recognition for this important activity. Some of the platforms that host preprint reviews will also provide DOIs for those reviews, making them citable and discoverable. We now wanted to explore some of the different modalities and platforms for preprint review, which are currently available. And to get us started, we will explore three examples of preprint reviews that are developed in a manner that is very similar to the peer review process that we are familiar with from academic journals. The first platform is Review Commons, with, which is a journal independent uh, peer review platform. In this model, the authors can post their preprints on a preprint server or submit directly to Review Commons. And in, within Review Commons, there is a group of editors associated with the Envoy journals that will help coordinate that peer review process. Once the peer review is complete, Review Commons will collate the review reports and transfer those to the authors with the feedback, but without including an editorial decision. An important element in the framework of Review Commons is the fact that they have partnered with a group of 17 affiliate journals that have agreed to reuse the reports, the reviews developed by Review Commons. This means that the authors can submit their manuscript along with the associated reviews provided by Review Commons and have their paper considered with those reviews by the affiliate journal of their choice. The goal here is to expedite the editorial consideration once the paper reaches the journal and hopefully reduce review, re review cycles as well, 
if that manuscript is not accepted by the first journal that it is submitted to. An important aspect of the editorial policies of Review Commons is that they encourage transparency and they will require that the preprint and the associated reviews that they have developed are publicly available on the preprint server at the latest by the time that that paper is transferred to an affiliate journal for consideration. A second platform that we will talk about is peer community in or PCI. PCI coordinates reviews on preprints across 15 discipline specific PCI communities. In the PCI model, a recommender is responsible for the review of the submitted preprints. These recommenders act in fact very similarly to journal editors. They will select reviewers, collect the reviews and then make decisions what they call a recommendation based on the feedback from those reviewers. The reviews and the decisions issued by PCI are given DOIs, so again, they are citable by themselves. And another important element within this model is the fact that authors of those PCI recommended preprints, so the preprints where the, the outcome of the recommendation is positive, can also choose to publish their manuscript in the PR community journal or to submit their paper along with the PCI reviews to what is called a PCI friendly journal, a journal that has agreed to consider those reports developed by PCI. Another example that we wanted to mention is that of the journal eLife. Your eLife will complete the peer review of manuscripts submitted to the journal and post the reviews alongside the preprints. In fact, eLife operates an editorial policy that requires that any manuscripts it will consider for publication must be available as a preprint prior to submission. The manuscripts then undergo their usual peer review process coordinated by eLife editors, and those eLife editors will make the editorial decision on publication at the journal. But the reviews that they will coordinate are also posted publicly with the copy of the manuscript on the preprint server. Importantly, eLife has recently announced that from 2023, it will no longer be making editorial decisions on the manuscripts it reviews. Instead, it will still complete that review process for the manuscript that is already available as a preprint, but it will publish a citable reviewed preprint alongside the, the reviews, including those reviews, as well as an eLife assessment aimed for the public to provide that context for that work. Something that may be worth highlighting is the fact that preprint reviews can come in a number of different formats. And many of the platforms that we have covered actually operate free form reviews, so similar to the reviewer uh, forms that we may have seen at journals. For example, this is the format that eLife, Review Commons, PCI operate. And also one example of the templates that the uh, platform pre-review offers to anybody who may want to contribute preprint reviews. But this is not the only review format available. For example, pre-review will also provide another type of template that is more aimed at guiding the development of the comments by the reviewer. So this template will include a set of questions that the reviewer can consider as they are developing their comments on the paper and their own report. In addition, pre-review also provides another type of template that takes a different format. This is what they call the rapid uh, pre-review template, which is essentially a set of questions to which the reviewer can provide quick answers, yes, no, unsure, or not applicable. And this is aimed at facilitating very quick reactions on papers, particularly for situations where that prompt feedback can be critical. For example, in the context of preprints in fields related to infectious diseases, outbreaks, or a pandemic. There are also ways to participate in pre-review that don't require you to receive an invitation, for example, from a journal editor. 
You can contribute reviews of preprints directly by posting your comments on a preprint server alongside the preprint you've assessed. You can choose when doing this to review a whole preprint or specific parts of it, depending on your areas of expertise. You can also choose to review preprints openly by putting your name on your reviewer comments or anonymously by using a pseudonym. And you can work alone or collaboratively with others, for example, through, through a journal club where you assess a, a preprint together and then post the club's feedback on a preprint server. And if you want to know more about the benefits of including preprints in your journal club discussions, ASAP Bios put together a very nice uh, set of discussion points for you to consider. In addition, Pre-Review has put together a video on how to start your own preprint journal club, and you can access the video via the link on this slide. It provides you with tips, for example, on how to find your community, how to find preprints that are relevant to you, how to use a collaborative document to share your comments and questions when jointly reviewing a preprint. And helpfully, it gives you a list of starter questions. For example, the template one that Aratra showed you on her previous slide that asks you a set of questions to consider as you work your way through a preprint. This is particularly helpful if you're evaluating preprints for the first time, because it gives you a framework to work within. So how might you participate in preprint review? We wanted to explore three different kinds of examples of the ways in which you can participate. We're going to look at how you contribute a review on a preprint server, how you provide a review on the pre-review platform, and how you join a community of assessors called the Prelights community in providing short summaries of preprints of interest. So let's begin by looking at how you contribute a review on a preprint server. Many preprint servers allow you to post comments directly next to a preprint they have posted. For example, this is possible on BioArchive as shown in this slide, but also on MedArchive, ResearchSquare and other preprint servers. To become a reviewer, you first need to create an account or alternatively you can sign in using an existing social media account in the case of BioArchive. Once posted, your review will be displayed next to the preprint and you can choose to use a pseudonym to post your review or you can choose to add your name to your comments. It's important to recognise, though, that when you post your comments directly on a preprint server, your, your review does not receive a DOI. So a DOI is signed to the preprint, but not to your reviewer comments. So they're not independently discoverable or citable. If you're considering reviewing through the pre-review pre platform, again, to become a reviewer, you need to create an account using your ORCID ID, and then you have a choice of submitting a rapid pre-review or a full pre-review, as Aratcha's described on her previous slides. To sign, uh, you can sign a review as with uh, posting on a preprint server, or you can post them anonymously using a pseudonym. Reviews are hosted on the pre-review platform itself and also on Zenodo with a CC BY license and they receive a DOI so they're independently discoverable. That's only though if you write a full review, so only full reviews receive a DOI. Some preprint servers link to these reviews, for example, BioArchive and MedArchive, or display them alongside the preprint if the author's given their permission for that to happen, for example, on SciELO preprints. You can also contribute summaries called Prelights to the Prelights platform, which is hosted by the Company of Biologists. Prelights are a publicly available summaries of preprints that provide interesting points and questions for authors, written in a very uh, easy to read way. So to apply to join the Prelights community, you need to uh, contact uh, Prelights. And when you start writing your summaries, if you're accepted onto the Prelights community, you should expect your name to be included together with your published summaries. Summaries are posted on a separate platform, in this case, the Prelight platform to the preprint itself. But again, links are provided to the preprint from your Prelight summary, and some preprint servers provide links back to the summaries themselves. So the, the, the summary and the preprints stay connected through these reciprocal links. 
A DOI is also assigned to pre-light summaries, so they are both discoverable and citable as well. So what should you consider when choosing where to post a preprint review? Consider whether the review will get a DOI, making it discoverable and citable. Consider whether it's, it matters to you to be able to post your review anonymously. And think about the review format you'd like to use as well. Think also about the license that is used to share your review. Is it making made openly accessible and reusable by all? So we have explored a number of modalities to contribute preprint reviews and different platforms where those reviews can be accessed and read. But there are a couple of other options available where you may find preprint reviews. And we wanted to talk a little bit about those as well. So we're gonna talk briefly about overlay journals and preprint review aggregators. Overlay journals are journals where the main output they will publish are actual reviews of papers rather than the articles themselves. The way that overlay journals work is that they will select manuscripts that are already available at open repositories, for example, preprints that have been posted on preprint servers, and the overlay journal will then coordinate reviews for those manuscripts. Those journals will then publish their reviews and links to the reviewed preprints. There are different overlay journals available across disciplines, and a few examples include Episciences journals, the JMIR overlay journals that are cover medicine, biology, and psychology, as well as Rapid Reviews COVID-19, which is an overlay journal with a focus on the review of uh, preprints related to the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to this, we have now a couple of examples of platforms that aggregate preprint reviews. These preprint review aggregators do not review preprints themselves, but instead seek to host preprint reviews that have been developed on different platforms of, by different groups or projects. A couple of examples of this include Society, which is a platform developed by eLife, and Early Evidence Base, a platform that has been developed by Embo. Society includes reviews from preprint review platforms such as the ones that we have already covered, Review Commons, Pre-Review, and others. But importantly, it has a broader scope versus that because it will also list preprint evaluations developed by community groups that coordinate specific evaluations of preprints of interest to them. So they don't need to be linked necessarily to a specific preprint review platform. The Society platform will also be open to hosting comments on preprints from a number of community groups. On the other hand, early evidence base is focused on aggregating preprints with in-depth reviews, so more structure reviews of the similar format of what you would expect at journals. This includes the platforms that we mentioned that involve coordination by an editor-like role, as well as platforms such as uh, PRF or periods of science. So we're now going to switch to talking about good conduct in preprint review. So what does good conduct in preprint review consist of? Well, to begin with, you should check your biases and assumptions. For example, are you likely to assume things about the quality of a preprint or the work reported in the preprint based on the identity of the authors, their nationality, their gender, the prestige or not of their research institute? Because you need to be aware of how these biases and assumptions can play into your ability to assess and evaluate a preprint with impartiality. And it's very important that when you play this role of a reviewer or an assessor or an evaluator of research, that you do, do so with impartiality. You must also disclose any potential competing interests. Please also be transparent about your expertise and about which parts of a preprint you've reviewed. And do always use constructive language to provide feedback that is clear and actionable. In order to be actionable, feedback needs to be specific so authors know exactly what parts of a, a manuscript you're referring to 
and what the specific nature of their concern is. You should focus any criticisms on the work and not on the authors and make it clear in your report if you've reviewed specific aspects of a preprint and which aspects, or if you've reviewed the entire preprint. If you're writing a kind of full text narrative type of full reviewer report, clearly demarcate within that report your major points of concern, those that impact the main conclusions of a preprint from your more minor points of concerns. For example, if you spot minor errors in the text, such as typos that need to be fixed. Do also communicate your enthusiasm and appreciation to the authors of the preprint, but also be constructive and candid about your concerns. We'd like to point you to the FAST principles that have been put together by ASAP Bio. The, the FAST principles set out 14 principles for creating, responding to, and interpreting preprint feedback. And they broadly fall around four themes of being focused, being appropriate, being specific, and being transparent. So this is not just about principles that should guide you as you evaluate a preprint as a reviewer, but also principles that can guide you as an author who's responding to a set of preprint reviewer comments. There's also the Open Reviewers Reviewer Guide that's been put together by Pre-Review, and the link here on the slide will take you through to a full description of this guide. But briefly, it provides you with six key steps on the pathway through from starting a preprint review to posting it. And it begins, as I've said before, by checking your biases and assumptions. Then in step two, you should read the preprint, gain a conceptual understanding of it. Ask yourself, do I have the knowledge and expertise to properly review this preprint? If you can, go ahead, do a fine detail read, and identify your major and minor issues. And then start to craft your feedback. As I've said, make your feedback clear, make it constructive and actionable, and put it all together into a coherative narrative account that takes the author step-by-step step through your evaluation of their preprint. Give it a final read, check it for your biases and assumptions, make sure you've been objective, polite, and constructive, and then share it by posting it on a preprint server or on the review platform that you've used. Right, so it's of course important to also touch on what's in it for you. So we wanted to mention what the benefits are for you individually from participating in preprint review. There are a number of uh, benefits to individual reviewers in contributing comments and feedback on preprints. First of all, it will help you improve your own skills in the critical and constructive appraisal of research. And this can apply to the research that is being produced by other peers, but also in terms of thinking as to how you think about the design of your own research and of developing the manuscripts from your research work. Preprint review can provide you with a fantastic opportunity to build your experience reviewing and hone your peer review skills. And this can be a stepping stone to getting opportunities to participate in your peer review as well. Importantly, participating in preprint review can also help you improve your own writing and communication skills as you think carefully as to how others are writing their own papers and your suggestions as to how those papers can be strengthened. Preprint review can also help with your understanding of what constitutes best practices in terms of peer reviewing others' work. And it is a way of contributing to the community comments on the latest findings and developing developments from your research field even prior to that uh, manuscript, to that work getting to being a submission to a journal submission. This can also be particularly valuable for the authors of the preprint who can get those comments from you and other members of the community to allow them to improve the quality and reporting of their manuscript again, even before they submit it to a, a journal for publication. And importantly, participating in preprint review can also be an opportunity to receive credit and recognition for reviewed preprints that you author and for participating as a reviewer of preprints. And in the context of recognition of preprint review, 
we realized that this space of preprint review is relatively new, but we are seeing a lot of innovation and growing interest from different stakeholders around these public preprint review activities. And we wanted to mention a couple of examples of developments that have come up in recent months. The first one is the EMBO postdoctoral fellowships. This is a program of fellowships that has been running for a while, and it included a, a requirement uh, for applicants to have a first author uh, peer-reviewed journal publication to be eligible for the fellowship. Interestingly, EMBO announced in April 2022 that they would actually consider preprints with in-depth peer reviews publicly available as also fulfilling that requirement of having a peer reviewed publication for eligibility for this fellowship. The second development related to recognition for preprint review was a statement issued in July 2022 by Coalition S, which is a group of research funders who have policies and an interest in driving open access to publications. In their statement from July, Coalition S stated that they would consider preprints that had undergone a formal and uh, in-depth peer review as equivalent to the requirements in terms of fulfilling expectations for peer reviewed publications. So they would consider the peer reviewed preprints as equivalent to peer reviewed publications appearing in a journal. So to summarize, becoming a preprint reviewer is good for your research, it's good for your career development and your career progression because you acquire and strengthen skills in the critical evaluation and the constructive evaluation of other researchers' work, which then informs your own. It helps to make peer review more inclusive because it allows more people to engage in the peer reviewing of research in their field, often enabling parts of our research community who've traditionally been underrepresented in journal peer review. And it's a benefit to your research community. It's a benefit to authors. It's also a benefit to all of the organizations that read and have an interest in the findings reported in preprints. They can be governmental organizations, non-governmental organizations, policy makers. Preprint review provides context. It provides uh, explanation and evaluation at that point at which that work is being more widely shared. And that has a societal benefit as well. So we'd like just to point to you where to go for more information. ASAP Bio has a really nice set of um, feedback FAQs. So you can read through there. So that through those FAQs, they cover a lot of common questions about preprints and preprint review. Pre-review has some really useful resources as well, including the Open Reviewers Toolkit. BioArchive has produced its own guide on how to comment on preprints on the BioArchive server. And Pre-review has its Open Reviewers Bias Reflection Guide, which I would encourage you all to read before you undertake for the first time the peer review of a preprint. If you're interested in becoming involved in preprint review, you can sign up to the preprint review recruitment network, which journal editors will be looking at on ASAP Bio's website as well. So Rach and I would like to say thank you for listening to this video and for sharing it as well. Thank you so much for listening. And if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to get in touch. And we'd also like to say thank you to Samantha and Richard and Daniela from the BioArchive pre-review and um, from MedArchive as well, and Jessica Polka from ASAP Bio for their helpful feedback on this video. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.